Hello, this is going to be a short video. Um, it's going to be a little different than others. Uh, in the past, I've done kind of uh, uh, difficult problems, uh, introducing a new topic. This one, I'm going to do a relatively simple problem and more importantly, kind of uh, motivate why it is we would use energy techniques um, in the system. Uh, our, our problem is going to be a simple one. It's one similar to one that we had before, which is that we have, let's say, a skier moving down a slope. Um, and we're going to assume that uh, there's very little friction um, and so that they're basically going down that, that slope um, without any friction. And, and the question we would ask is, let's say, is if this, you know, if, if this person is, is um, let's say, uh, you know, 10 meters high on a slope, um, what's their speed when they get to the bottom? Problem at the bottom. You know, assuming that, you know, if they start at rest. Um, using our older techniques, our, our force techniques, this is a relatively complex problem, right? Uh, what we would do, and I'm going to switch my skier to a block. What we would do is we would have to draw a force of gravity. We would draw the normal force. Um, we'd probably set up our axes like this, x, y. We would break up our um, gravity into x and y components, fgx, fgy, and then we would have to use Newton's laws um, to basically solve for us, right? We would use f net, um, and the x direction was equal to, um, uh, let's say, um, uh, fg, I guess it's just fgx is the only thing in the x direction, is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. We would have the f net y is equal to um, fgy um, and minus fgy plus fn is equal to mass times acceleration. We would set that equal to zero because there's no acceleration. Find the normal force, plug it back in. We'd have to find these angles, all this type of stuff. After we got done with that, then we would have to find that we'd have to use the acceleration in our kinematics equations to say, well, you know, okay, it's a, the, the, um, the, the velocity at the bottom uh, is related to the velocity, um, the initial velocity, which of course is zero, um, plus 2a, um, you know, x minus x zero, we'd have to find this distance, blah, 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 blah. Okay, pretty complicated problem. Um, and uh, not necessarily one um, I want to solve right now. So let's do it our energy way. Now, what we do with our energy um, is, is there's, there's basically one major pr uh, point of this whole uh, energy chapter, which is that the energy at the beginning, the, 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 what, what's called the, me the mechanical energy at the beginning of a process is the same as the end if we don't have anything, uh, any special forces like friction or a drag that, that basically um, effectively take away mechanical energy. So the way we write that is, is that we say that, you know, I, I always actually just write it initially as energy at initial is equal to energy final, or the energy at the beginning is equal to the energy at the end. Um, and in these gravity situations, um, the, 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 um, we, we only have one type, two types of energy. We have um, kinetic energy, which we call Ke. Kinetic energy is just the energy from things moving. All right, so it's, it's basically if something is moving, it has kinetic energy. If it's not, it doesn't. Um, and then we have to add potential energy. Uh, potential energy can take a lot of forms, but most of the stuff we're going to be talking about here is just gravitational potential energy. Basically, potential energy that has to do with the fact that things that are held uh, up higher um, can drop uh, when pulled on by gravity. And so we say kinetic energy initial, potential energy initial is equal to kinetic energy final minus, uh, plus potential energy final. Basically just saying that energy at the beginning is equal to the energy at the end. Again, the, um, the kinetic energy has a special form, uh, which is that it's, it's one half mv squared. All right, we're gonna say, of course, initial. Um, this is always the form for kinetic energy. Uh, it's important to note that this v is not a vector in this case. This is, this is the speed, not the velocity. This is just how fast we're moving um, in the frame that we're looking at. Um, so in, in our, the case of our um, skier in this case, uh, they're, they're, they're not moving at all. So this is zero and that, that term's just going to go away. 
Again, we don't have any um, types of forces pulling on it uh, that would cause potential energy. The only ones we're ever going to deal with basically are springs and uh, gravity. We don't have any springs in this problem, so, so gravity seems to be the only one left. And the, the potential energy equation for, um, uh, for gravity is, is pretty simple. It's PGY final, okay, um, where I'm calling Y basically my up and down direction, the, the direction that gravity goes in. Um, it's important to note that to actually define what our potential energy is, um, we have to define what we call zero potential energy or what we call y equal to zero. I'm going to do a pretty standard thing, which we're going to call the bottom of the hill y equals zero. Okay, so we're just going to call that y equals zero. Um, and so, uh, sorry, that should be initial y initial. Um, and so again, we just have the same terms on the other side, but now they just have finals on them, um, mgy final. Okay, so if I rewrite this, I get the mass times the gravity times the initial height. The initial height, or the initial y, uh, I originally said was 10 meters, all right, is equal to 1 half mv final squared plus mg y final squared, or uh, y final. Now, I just said that I'm calling the final place, basically the bottom of the hill, y equals zero, and so this term is going to go away. And so now we just have that mgy initial is equal to one half mv final squared. You notice there's an m on each side, we can cancel that out. And what I find is that v final is just equal to two g y initial, um, the square root of that or that v final is equal to square root of two times 10 meters per second squared approximately for gravity and 10, which is our height, 10 meters. So I get 100, 200, the square root of 200, um, uh, what is that, uh, uh, 45 or something like that? Uh, is that right? Yeah, um, uh, somewhere around that, 45, uh, 46, um, somewhere. Say 46. Um, it's going to actually be closer to 48. Uh, 48 meters per second. Okay, and you notice how quickly that happened. Um, basically, we got uh, I exactly um, what we were looking for, which is uh, the the um, uh, the I actually don't know what this number is. Look it up, whatever the square root of 200 is. Um, we got exactly what we're looking for, uh, which is uh, the final velocity in basically very few steps that didn't involve all these kinematics that we would have had to do otherwise. Um, and we did it just based on uh, the height uh, and the distance and didn't have to do with all these vectors and all this other stuff. Um, I hope it's useful. Uh, sorry for not being able to look up that number. Um, I don't have my calculator here. So anyway, look that up, uh, do this problem, and come in with whatever our V final is, um, and with any of your questions, and hopefully uh, that will help clear up a little bit about why we're doing energy. Good news is it should be a lot easier than some of this vector stuff we've been doing, so hopefully you enjoy it. All right, see you soon.